And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. Glad you could join us. And uh, speaking about joining us, right now, Steve Farhood from Showtime. He joins us right now. Good evening, Steve. Billy C, how are you? Not too bad, brother. Not too bad. Um, I, you know, I, I've been dying to, to ask you. You know, I, I feel you do one of the best jobs uh, uh, on television right now with Showtime, especially with your scoring. And we're always talking about judges and and. You know, not to mention any other networks or names or anything like that. But some people are very adamant about their scorecards and everybody else is wrong and, and all of that. But you never present it that way. You're asked what your score is. You give your score. You give a reason why. And that's the end of that. Nobody else is right or wrong. And that's the way judging is supposed to be. It's a subjective thought. Uh, it's a subjective sport. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think you used the key word there. And I've been saying and writing about it for, for 30 years, subjective. Um, professional judges are professional judges. Now, I'm not going to say that subconsciously sometimes they don't know who the promoter wants to win. We know that's the case. But nonetheless, um, there is more than one way to see a fight. There are more angles to see a fight. The three judges you know, sit on three different sides of the ring. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of subjectivity involved. And I think you see that on the Showtime broadcast when, when Al and Paulie and I are scoring fights. You know, you, sometimes we see it a little differently. You know, three jabs equal one power punch. I mean, there's no formula for any of this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, there are robberies and there are robberies. You know what I mean, Billy? And, and, and sometimes you see a fight and you go, hey, that guy didn't win. I'm sorry. Under no circumstance did he win. And the judges will give him the decision. In that case, it's a robbery. Otherwise, most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, when you get a little bit of a controversy in scoring, it's very subjective. Yeah, no, I, you see, I agree with that point 100%. And I love... You know, at one time, another network had shown us um, the viewpoint from the three judges and being ringside a, a, a lot. I, I know that depending upon where you're sitting, um, there's definitely a different view. Sometimes fighters feel more comfortable fighting in a certain area of the ring, and, and uh, obviously those judges get a, a better view. Um, you know, you hit something that bothers me the most. There is, I mean, we all know what the criteria for judging is, but what I don't think... Uh, the judges know, or, or they definitely uh, differ, in, is the order of that criteria. And I think if that was more defined, I, I think some of these scores would be more in line. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, two of the four criteria for scoring really don't count. One is ring generalship, which is a vague term. What does that mean? Does that mean you're moving me to the inside against a robot? I, I don't know what that means. The other is defense. You know, if you throw 50 punches and my defense is so good that I slip all 50, but I don't throw one punch back. Who wins the round? You know every judge in the world is going to give it to the guy who threw the 50 punches. So I don't know how much defense really counts or should count. It's really about effective punching. And I think the one biggest problem, your, your point is a good one, which is that maybe the criteria is not in order um, of the four points of scoring. The other point is that I think all too often judges will reward the busier fighter or the more aggressive fighter, even if he's not effective. And the term is effective aggressiveness, not aggressiveness. So I think it's really important for the judges to focus on, is the uh, aggressive guy landing his shots? A lot of times he's not. And you, you have to consider that when you, at the end of the round. When you score fights, you, you, you point out a lot about effective body work and infighting. It's something that I feel is almost a lost art in the sport of boxing. Do you feel that a lot of the, the, the current you know, official judges are forgetting about body shots and, the, and they don't score as such? I don't know. I, I think there's, there's some acknowledgement of body shots. Certainly it's not like the amateur game where you can pound the guy to the body and they don't give you points. Uh, maybe that'll change now without the computerized scoring in the amateurs. But I think the pro game, uh, especially out west where – the, uh, the style of fighting includes much more body punching than it does back east. I, I think that the judges are pretty fair about that. And, you know, there's one other point, Billy, uh, that I like to make, which is that, look, I watch, you know, I probably see 90% of my fights on TV and 10% live, right? We all do. There's a big difference watching a fight live and scoring it and watching it on TV and scoring it. You're, you're seeing it in a totally different way. And that's something else to think about. When the announcer sees it 96, 94, and the fans see it 99, 91, there could be a reason for that. The, the, the medium is the message, you know. I mean, there's a difference between watching live and watching on TV. I, I agree 100 percent. We talk about that all the time. But let me throw a, a little techn technology at you. 
Now, we, we both agree, and, and most people agree, that the judges, you know, sitting where they're sitting, and, and uh, you know, if you can exclude the, the, what you hear ringside, you know, the, the, the sound of the punch landing solid or what have you, um, but sometimes the rope is in their way or a, ju- a referee, I'm sorry, has a tendency to stand in, in the front of a, a judge and, and block their view or what have you. Do you think someday that um, because of the technology and high-definition uh, cameras that we have now, and if it was presented in a, a, a good way, do you think judges would be put in a room where fan you know, noise and hometown crowd would not affect them? Because sometimes I believe that affects them as well, and, and actually judge from a place other than ringside? Well, that's an interesting point because judges are human, obviously. And let's say, let's say you're doing a fight. You're an American judge. You're doing a fight in South Korea with a, a South Korean flyweight champ. And let's say it's a WBC fight and there's open scoring. Well, having that judge right out in the open there puts a lot of undue pressure on him between maybe not having the best view and the cr- pressure from the crowd and having his scores announced every round. That's one of the reasons I'm against open scoring. Um, th- there is a lot of pressure. I mean, ideally, maybe um, Joe Cortez has a great idea, and maybe it'll be implemented someday. In terms of viewpoint of the judge, he feels the judge should be elevated much higher so that he's not blocked by the ropes, so he's not blocked by the referee, almost like a, a high camera that when you see when they use the jib camera and they show you action from there. Now, the problem with that is obvious. Somebody's, somebody's paying customers is going to be blocked by the, ref, by the judge being that high. He's not going to be able to see the fights. So I think that's why. But Joe came up with that idea years ago, um, and I think it's a good one. And that would, that would solve a lot of the problems about the judge's perspective uh, in seeing the fight. Well, that could also be a safety issue for, for the judge and, and the fighters, too, no? I mean, if he was, uh, if he was ringside up higher, uh, uh, you know, a, a fighter leaning against the ropes could conceivably hit him, right? Exactly. Yeah, there, there are problems with it, and, and that's probably why we haven't seen it yet. Um, theoretically, it makes a lot of sense. They just have to figure out how to work it. Now, I'm going to try to tiptoe th- on this question as best I can, but obviously I'm not going to be able to. But I can't stand the, the, st- the stats, the so-called okay. stats. Um, uh, I, 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 like them, I like them as a conversation piece after the fight. I, I think mm-hmm. it's cool. You know, we both agree, and most boxing people agree, you know, the sport's subjective, blah, blah, blah. You and I and, and Al Bernstein could watch the same punch thrown, and I could say it landed, you could say it missed, and, and Al could say, I didn't even see the punch, you know? So, right, I, right. and all we could all feel very strongly about, um, you know, that, that, that punch. Um, with that said, how does this, these stats all of a sudden. And a lot of uh, you know guys that I see calling the fights and stuff are actually using using them as part of their their conversation about the fights. And and it's not like baseball. You know, you you step up to the plate and you hit the ball five out of ten times. You're batting five hundred. You know, you're a running back in football. You know, you you gain five yards of carry. You run ten times. You you got fifty yards. Those are statistics. Boxing mm-hmm. is subjective. How, how, what's your thoughts on that uh, on the whole stat thing and how? It seems that people are taking these stats, which are subjective by someone else's opinion, as, as mm-hmm. total fact. Well, I, I, your point's a good one, and it's something that I don't think people think about all the time, which is just that those raw facts are not necessarily facts, that they're subjective. I sit next to, when I do Showtime Championship boxing shows, I very often sit next to the, the, the CompuBox guys to count the punches. Now, they're very experienced at it. And I tried it years ago at home. Bobby Canobio, who's the president of the company, brought his gear here. And, um, you know, I was thinking about doing it a little part-time. I tried it. It's really hard to do. I mean, I-, I could never just sit there and do it out of, you know, without practice. It takes a while. And there is a subjective nature to it. You know, you see a punch, like you said, you see a punch landing. I see it not landing or being blocked or whatever. So there is subjectivity. But overall, I think it's a fine thing as long as it's not overused or used as gospel. And I'll give you an example of a fight where perhaps it was, you know, it could, could have been misused or abused, which was the, the recent um, Omar Figueroa fight with Arakawa. I mean, Arakawa outpunched Figueroa by I don't know how many punches, 400 punches, 200 punches. The difference in the fight was the power. There was a huge difference in, in impact when Figueroa landed as opposed to the Japanese fighter. And that's where the numbers can be a little misleading in fights like that, because it is pro boxing. It's not amateur boxing. We're not just counting punches. So, you know, the copy box stuff, I think it's a tool. I think it's a good tool as long as it's not overused or misused. You know, the, the, the thing is, is my, my feeling on it, two, two points. Number one, um, when the human element is taken out of it, 
if if they ever invent some kind of a you know send receive device you know in the glove in different parts of the body, then I could uh, appreciate it as statistics because the the opinion the subjectivity is removed. Um, mm-hmm. But the other thing is is the way it's defined like like Bob you know I I've had Bob on the show before and and you know they they define it as a jab you know mm-hmm. a a power shot uh, or a body shot right. And if in a case where a fighter comes out and he lands one punch and it's a stiff jab and knocks out his opponent with one punch and it's a jab, the stats will show one jab. It won't even right. reflect as a power punch. And I just don't see how we could even talk about that. Yeah, and, and, and to, to echo your point or to take it a step further, you and I are fighting on the inside. And I'm doing a little shoe shine thing with meaningless punches. Um, and they all count as power shots because they're not jabs. So, yeah, there's, there's most definitely a subjectivity to it. And, again, it just can't be used as gospel. If you don't use it as gospel and you don't point to it and say, this is why I gave this guy the round, then it's okay. But you know what? Boxing, I think sports fans in general, we've been sort of, we've been sort of conditioned into being stat people. You know, baseball is a great sport for stats, obviously. This, the other sports a little less. Boxing has very few stats. You've got knockouts and wins and losses and... You know, what else you have? How many titles you won? It's not a sport driven by stats. And I think from a TV perspective, the fact that you can use CompuBox or you can use punch stats um, gives another tool to the announcers and to the TV where there aren't that many others to use. And I think that's part of the appeal from a TV perspective about, uh, about count- counting punches. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, And, and I think that that's totally the, the, the reason they use it. They're trying to... In their mind, the suits uh, that are making the decisions think that it's uh, it's a more it's a more pleasing show for the viewers. Mm-hmm. And, and and I guess I look at it from the boxing purist point, you know, where that's what makes the sport so great. The subjectivity, mm-hmm. the, the, the disagreement you and I could have over a fight and a result. And, and as right. long as we're, you know, we're arguing it uh, like civilly, uh, you know, that's the beauty of it. It's something that you, there's no right or wrong answer. And that's what I love about it. Um, That's fr- true, and, and and for the people that yell about bad decisions, you know, when has uh, outside of the Pacquiao fight with um, with Bradley. Um, Bradley outside of that fight, when has there been that big a public outcry about a decision being bad? And there have been some bad decisions. Let's face it, you know, it's it's never a threat to to the foundation of the sport. If anything, it's been positive because it creates a lot of controversy and a lot of news about a rematch. You know, we've seen that a million times. So I, on the list of boxing negatives i don't put that near the top you know it's funny you mentioned the, the pacquiao bradley fight because um in that particular fight now people are actually using that as an example of why pacquiao's you know on his way out or he's finished or you know and it's like how could you even use that loss as an example i mean that's pretty right. much agreeable that it was a robbery yeah i mean i think everybody thought he won the fight and fought pretty well maybe not as well as manny in other fights but Right. How do you criticize a guy for being on the downside? Now people are saying, well, he lost two in a row. Right, right. Well, you know, you can't have it both ways. Exactly. Was it a bad decision? If it was, then don't say he lost two in a row. Exactly. That was my point. Hey, Friday night, yeah. you guys got a big uh, test fight as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Deontay Wilder is, in my opinion, Steve, for the first time really stepping in with a, with a real opponent. That isn't really coming off of any great performances. I, you know, we're longing for a, a, an American heavyweight. Is Deontay Wilder this guy? How do you think he's going to do? I think he'll do very well uh, Friday night. I don't know if he's the guy. Yeah, it's been a long drought. Deontay Wilder's been moved at a very slow pace, very, very slow. And I think the worst thing that happened to this guy, in a sense, was that he won the bronze medal. Because, you know, and he's the last American male to win an Olympic boxing medal. And that was, what, four or five years ago in 2008. Because there were expectations when you come home and you're the only athlete on the team that wins a medal. There were expectations. In fact, going into the Olympics, Deontay Wilder had a very, very thin amateur career. And these first 28 fights he's had really were his amateur experience. He fought very easy competition. I've watched a lot of his fights. They were guys that didn't belong in the ring with him. And he's a work in progress. And if you view his 28 pro fights as amateur fights, which I, I, you can't really do because people are paying to see them, um, you know, and, he, and he's getting paid. Um, you know, then, then you understand his career a little better. But L- Lukovic is, is a step up. It's a name. It's a former champ. I would be very surprised if Wilder doesn't win, uh, probably by knockout. But, you know, and, and there's one other factor, Billy, which you have to think about. And this isn't just with Wilder. This is with Brian Jennings. This is with name your heavyweight of choice. The Klitschko's are getting a little older. One of them is over 40 already. I don't know how long they're going to fight. But if I'm a handling 
a young American heavyweight who's kind of still raw like Wilder, what's the rush? You know, I mean, yeah, people, people and fans say, come on, fight somebody already. I want to see you fight Chris Ariola. I want to see you fight this guy, that guy. Well, you know, I'd rather Deontay Wilder make his big move after the Klitschko's are gone, to be honest with you, because he's going to have a hell of a lot of better chance of succeeding. No, you're, you're right there, but uh, it falls back to, uh, it's actually a great segue for, for my next question. First of all, you, meant Brian, you mentioned Brian Jennings. I, I love that kid. You know, I, 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 know, I think he's a little too small um, for the heavyweights mm-hmm. of today. But everything else about him, I, I've always said, I, I think he reminds me kind of of a, a cross between, a because of his his style, kind of like a Michael Spinks when he moved to heavyweight and Evander Holyfield. He's kind of like that kind of a mix of a guy to me, you know. Right, and uh, right. I, I love watching him, but I just think his physical size uh, is uh, uh, going to hurt him. But, but you're right ab- about that, about waiting for, uh, uh, you know, the right fights. I mean, Klitschko seem unbeatable right now. Uh, um, I think the young fan today puts too much emphasis in the O, and I think that also has something to do with it. What, what do you think about that? It's too much emphasis on what, what's that? The, oh, the, you know, okay. the undefeated record. Oh, on undefeated records. Yeah, of course. That's the case across the board in boxing. It's been that way now for a lot of years. And, you know, TV's largely to blame for that, let's face it. I think on Showtime, with the recent um, focus on the 140, 147, 154-pound divisions, if a guy loses, he can come back. It all depends on how he loses. We've seen it with Soto Karras. Look, Soto Karras lost to Maidana, right? Yeah. Back he comes on Showtime. What does he do? You know, he stops Andre Berto. So I like the fact that with with a lot of fighters, the, the undefeated record isn't the most important thing. We've seen it a lot. You, you, Guerrero lost to Mayweather. You're going to see Guerrero back in a big fight. You're going to see Victor Ortiz back in a big fight. You know, so when the divisions are hot, I think you can get away with losing. Sometimes you have to go to the back of the line. In the heavyweight division, there's more of an emphasis on record. There's more of an emphasis on who you fought. And that, that's unfortunate, I think, because, you know, what, is it, what does a loss mean? It doesn't. Thomas Adamek's a kind of a hot heavyweight. He's lost, right. you know. And I think you're going to see him in with Jennings pro- probably pretty soon, maybe the next fight for both guys. And that's an interesting fight. So you can't hold it against the guy for losing. Again, it depends on how he fought in losing. You know, great segue for my last question, and I, I know you're busy. Um, one thing I admire about Showtime is th- that fact that you just kind of alluded to in a roundabout way, that they bring fighters back despite losing as long as the performance is good. And one guy that sticks out that I can't wait to see again is Diego Chavez, man. What a fight that was against uh, um, against Keith one time Thurman. And uh, I, can we expect to see Chavez back? I mean, he, he, I want to see more of him. Un- unfortunately, yeah. I didn't get to see more. What do you think? I'm with you. I mean, why not? Um, for that matter, Paulie Malinaji didn't exactly fight badly against Broner. You know, I think he fought better than most people thought. Paulie was a 10-1 to 1 underdog in that fight. So, you know, you have to think, you have to find the right spot for these guys. Yes, Omar Chavez, hey, against a different fighter, he would have scored a knockout win that night. I mean, he was, I was there. He, he was hitting. In round one, they were throwing bombs. It could have been a first-round knockout in that fight. So, yeah, I, I think that it's going to be harder because when a division is red hot, like the welterweight division is, you lose a fight. I don't care how well you fight. You do take a step back and you, you, you know, there are guys in front of you online and that Chavez has to face that, but you're not going to get paid what you got paid last time. You know, you're going to get paid less. Paulie's not going to make 1.2 million the next time he fights, you know, like he did. with. But why not put, put these guys, bring them back. If they fight Chavez for an exciting fight, bring them back. I agree with you, man, Steve, I appreciate the time. And, uh, uh, you know, I hope to uh, hope to get you on the show again, and uh, we'll go from there, my man. I look forward to it, Billy. Thanks for having me on, man. Thanks a lot, Steve. All the best. Steve Farhood, one of the best, uh, in my opinion, one of the best announcers uh, out there today. You can catch him on Showtime. Uh, glad he joined us. Hey, listen, I got to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 